Gather round, children. It's time for a scary story. This story is about something scarier than ghosts or werewolves. It's about scientific determinism. <laughs> there was once a demon, and he knew the position and momentum of every particle in the universe. And this demon used the mathematical formalisms of classical mechanics in order to predict all of the states of past and future particles. They went around searching for the culprit. Who created this demonical being that robbed us of our free will? It was French scientist Pierre Simon Laplace. It's always the French. They said, Laplace, you have robbed us of our free will, of a universe that obeys anything but laws of mechanistic causation. And Laplace said back, Nah, the CTMU disproves that. I recently came across this theory by this woman named Sabine Hassenfelder, who has received pretty popular academic and online attention for her theory of superdeterminism. Superdeterminism says what Laplace's demon says. It says that everything is already predetermined and uses this predetermination as a way to explain the non-local results of quantum mechanics. The trouble with quantum mechanics that many have pointed out for a deterministic worldview is that reality is non-local. Two particles light years apart can be entangled with one another's states, meaning that they're not communicating information in a way that is deterministic, that they are directly attached to one another, but that both of their states are being determined by some other fundamental process. And even if it were true that we could predict the future states of the universe if we had the position and momentum of every particle in the universe, that's not even possible because according to Werner Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, the more that we know about the position of a quantum object, the less we know about its momentum and vice versa. So we can never have all of the information we need about a system in order to make a deterministic calculation. Further, scientific research such as the double slit experiment has shown definitively that quantum systems don't have definite states prior to being observed or measured. And superdeterminism tries to get around that in this really clever way. It says that both the determination made by the observer and the final state of the object are already determined. Everything is basically this big puppet show and any observer effects that we see are already predetermined. Quantum physicists Howard Wiseman and Eric Cavalcanti argue that any hypothetical superdeterministic theory would be about as plausible and appealing as a belief in ubiquitous alien mind control. Despite the seemingly solid arguments of superdeterminism, quantum physics proves that human observers must have free will. The first important thing to understand about quantum physics is that the universe is non-deterministic at the quantum level, where particles exist in superposition until they are measured. So for any given quantum object, until it is measured, there is this expansive space of potential called a wave function. And so the wave exists in a superposition of all of these different states until it is measured and it decoheres into one particular state. And this indicates that reality is to some degree subjective, meaning that it only becomes concrete through observation. The 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics went to physicists who proved that the universe is not locally real, meaning that at the quantum level, you cannot separate the real properties of physical systems from observation and processing. The quantum wave function cannot be collapsed by my camera. It's not just perception or measurement, but it requires a mind, which means a system with information processing and free decision. And this is required by the definition of the wave function collapse. According to Henry Stapp, one of the all-time quantum physics legends, wave function collapse refers to the process where a quantum system, initially in a superposition of multiple possible states, abruptly transitions to a single definite state upon interaction with a conscious observer's choice or decision, essentially linking the act of measurement to the conscious mind's active participation in collapsing the wave function. 
So the key points about Stapp's view on wave function collapse are one, it requires consciousness, which implies free will as the key element. Unlike other interpretations where measurement is considered a passive act, in Stapp's view, we as conscious observers are actively participating through our free decision in the outcome of the quantum measurement, and we have an active role in collapsing the wave function. It also suggests that the mind can influence the quantum system at a distance, meaning giving this model for non-local interaction, where even if we are not physically present, if we're observing a photon that hits our eye from light years away, we are participating in that quantum event, even though the photon was emitted billions of years ago. According to Stapp's projection postulate, the conscious mind has to make a choice. It has to select a specific state from the superposition using its own free decision. So the wave function collapse can't work without the information provided by consciousness or free will. Wave function collapse has to be collapsed by an observer. Super determinism is what is called a realistic theory of reality, which holds on to the standard idea of physical reality that is inherited from classical mechanics. It says that the universe consists of real objects which are not dependent on observation, that the universe exists independently of observation, and that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, even information. So when we have these entangled particles or we have the observer effects from conscious observers billions of light years away, there has to be some sort of physical explanation for that. But Bell's theorem, which refers to a series of related results, which says that the universe can't exist independently of observation, and that information does travel faster than the speed of light with quantum entanglement, disproves quantum realism. We simply cannot realistically hold on to our prior intuitive conceptions of reality given the findings of quantum mechanics. We have to deal with wave function collapse and observer effects on their own terms. There have been many interpretations of the quantum wave function collapse that are try to sidestep this inevitable result. The many worlds interpretation says that there is a multiverse of infinite possible universes that split off at every possible quantum event. But then the question remains, what selects the universe in which we continue to exist, in which the causation is not random, we weren't put into a randomly selected universe, but it aligns with the free choice and decisions of observers in the world? Why do we live in this particular universe which continues to remain coherent rather than all of the other universes which could split off every millisecond into complete nonsense? The more complicated our theory is, we're saying, oh, there are these infinite new universes that are created with every quantum collapse. Rather, we could just say the quantum wave function actually collapses. And according to Occam's razor, the more complicated theory is usually less plausible. Technically, super determinism does work as a theory of quantum mechanics. It is possible that every quantum state as well as every quantum decision is jointly determined and therefore that we have no observer effects. The universe is locally real and it could exist independently of perception. The fair fight is between free will and super determinism is that free will gives this very plausible explanation which says that we as conscious observers help participate in the structure and dynamics of quantum systems and super determinism says well no all of that was predetermined so it's not technically an observer effect it's just the unfolding of the universe and it's you know, all of these observer effects are basically illusions. So super determinism has a number of strengths for scientific materialists. And there's a reason why so many people have latched onto this. It's because it says that measurement effects are predetermined as well. So we don't have to think about the kind of wonky implications of conscious observers having an effect on quantum mechanics. It explains Bell's theorem without abandoning realism or locality. It says there's no free will, which a lot of scientists like, but it doesn't contend with the facts on their own terms. It's basically equivalent to Albert Einstein's stubbornness, which is where he came across all of these mathematical formalisms of quantum mechanics, and he didn't like it. It didn't intuitively make sense to him that physical systems were dependent on observation, and so he futilely spent a lot of his life trying to refute it, even though he was involved in the very early construction of its ideas. It really messes with a lot of people that quantum mechanics makes you give up your assumptions about realism and locality. It just doesn't seem right from a scientific materialist perspective that our perception has any impact on reality. But if we're looking 
purely from the evidence of quantum mechanics. It is more plausible that that is true than that there's a multiverse or there's super deterministic causation that makes us like puppets that are observing but we're actually being tricked. The problem with super determinism isn't that it is impossible that in a deterministic universe there would be measurement effects, but that it's impossible that we live in a deterministic universe. Because if you posit determinism, you have to have something external to the universe that determines it. It violates the logical reality principle. If reality contains all and only that which is real, then if reality is deterministic, it has to be self-determining. What is it, Sabine, that determines reality? It can't be anything external because anything external to reality is not real. Reality is a closed descriptive manifold, meaning nothing outside of reality has any effect on it whatsoever. So reality has to be self-determining, self-creating, all these things we've talked about before. And if reality is self-determining and reality makes these decisions at the broad scale, then it's secondary agents the people who make decisions within it, who are able to impact quantum systems, have to be self-determining as well. So quantum mechanics defines observers as participants. And this is true even in super determinism. So the participants within reality inherit the free decision of the global reality system. We inherit the creativity of the universe. Super determinism rather absurdly agrees with Laplace's demon and says that all choices are determined by the universe's initial state. The CTMU and these models of free will and self-generativity say that all choices and events share in the generativity of the universe's initial state. So basically, we are constantly creating the universe anew from its base structure, and we are acting as observer participants within the structure and dynamics of reality. The Bell tests definitively prove that locality, realism, or free choice must be reconsidered. The CTMU saves free choice while only abandoning realism in the naive sense, in the sense that physical reality is primary, and locality is also preserved under certain conditions in the conspansive manifold, a mathematical space onto which quantum mechanics is mapped as the open top structure. Superdeterminism, in its rejection of free choice, throws out the baby with the bathwater. It is basically an anti-quantum mechanical theory because it says that everything is deterministic at the global level and quantum mechanics is a complicated illusion generated by the observation of humans. So even if there are measurement effects, it's not due to free will because the brain is deterministic according to Sabine. So super determinism is completely deterministic, as its name suggests, whereas quantum mechanics is self-deterministic in reality, meaning that it has this self-distributed freedom which occurs across structures in reality, and the universe is basically this vast self-synthesizing information system with creatures like humans who are able to participate in its informational structure. So super determinism aligns with Einstein's view that quantum mechanics is incomplete, aligning with deterministic physics and getting rid of this spooky action at a distance that they call non-locality. But that is basically nonsense. There is no way to get around the results of quantum mechanics within quantum mechanics. And these elaborate attempt to do so, it doesn't hold up, to be honest. So Laplace thought that if we knew every variable of every force, we'd be able to predict everything past, present, and future. But this completely physicalist and deterministic model, like superdeterminism, doesn't hold up. Laplace's demon who can predict future states based on the positions and velocity of every particle in the universe, that is fake in the CTMU. It's not possible due to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You cannot perfectly measure all properties of a system. And superdeterminism's insistence that mind is generated by a deterministic brain does not square with the findings of modern science. As Stapp said, the collapse of the quantum wave function requires a observer's free decision. Free will cannot be an illusion. Superdeterminism doesn't even consider consciousness on its own term. It only hand waves it and says it must be a physical and deterministic process. That is an assumption. That is not science. There is no evidence for a hidden determinism theory of quantum mechanics. So superdeterminism, even if it makes sense intuitively to scientists who want to have this deterministic model of reality, it doesn't correspond to the structure of quantum mechanics. It's like fitting a triple XL shirt on a baby. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't scale. Quantum mechanics proves free will because for the observer effect 
to exist, we have to have new information generated, which is not possible by a deterministic mind. For the quantum wave function collapse to work, we have to have new information generated, which is demonstrably unpredictable by a deterministic model, which we need a combination of determinacy and non-determinacy to model complex free systems. We need self-determinacy. We need free decision and new information. We need a generative structure with multiple possible futures to select from, which means that if the future is already determined, then there's no space of potential through which the universe can evolve. We need a generative process of selection from those multiple possible futures, and we need a future to past meta causation in which the outcome which is selected can actually affect the present moment in order to bring about its own emergence. The CTMU and free will as a quantum mechanics theory is a better explanation for quantum wave function collapse than super determinism in all respects. The CTMU uses this sum over futures paradigm in which instead of registering the past states of quantum systems, it generatively evolved using its future states. Using this space of potential is then programming the present according to the free choice and free decision of conscious observers, and it uses that to collapse that space of potentiality into a definite state, and that is what explains the wave-particle duality that we see in quantum mechanics. Despite the seemingly solid arguments of superdeterminism, quantum physics does definitively prove, in my opinion, that human observers must have free will. And this is shown by the quantum wave function collapse observer effect, in which observers are seen to have a impact on quantum systems through their free decision and conscious choice. A reductio ad absurdum of the super deterministic theory of reality where basically you have to say that the free choice of observers is produced by a deterministic brain and that that somehow still has a quantum measurement effect that's not really possible because no new information is generated and quantum mechanics basically proves free will because all of the elements that are needed for the quantum wave function collapse, which we observe whenever a quantum object decoheres from a wave into a particle. Basically, this shows that we do, in fact, have free will and we are participatory agents in reality. The CTMU is a superior model of quantum physics to super determinism. It's called the cognitive theoretic model of the universe, and it has a unique and original approach to solving a lot of these fundamental challenges in science and philosophy. If you want to learn more, you can join a nonprofit online educational platform I founded called Compatriot Academy, which will basically teach you everything you need to know. We have courses from some of the top instructors in the world on science and philosophy and classical education. Basically everything that you need to get from zero to 100 in the CTMU and also to get a full depth metaphysical education we have over at Compatriot Academy. I'm so excited to see you in there if you want to learn more stuff like this. We have hundreds of lectures that will cover every topic that you could imagine as well as a thriving intellectual community within our platform. Thank you. Let the light shine forth in the darkness. May the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Like and subscribe.